In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Today's Chaplain Report, we're going to do something a little different, and we'll continue with our series on Daniel a little bit later, but Sunday is Mother's Day, and I thought it would be appropriate to just do a little something special for the moms this Sunday. So because of that, we're going to look at this passage and to understand what's going on in this verse. This is a letter from Paul to Timothy somebody who he considers his son in the faith, and he's trying to instruct this young preacher on how to most effectively share the gospel of Christ. And those letters are something that is, you can tell it really means a lot to Paul. And he really is concerned with Timothy's well-being, his spiritual growth, all of these things, and he really does kind of talk like a father to him. And there's this really beautiful passage in the first chapter of his second book in, in 2 Timothy 1, verses 5 through uh, five through 6 here, if I can ever get it pulled up. There we go. For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am sure that it is in you as well. For this reason I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. One thing that's so great about that passage there is it really is Paul admonishing the good work that Timothy's mother and grandmother did in shaping who he is as a man. Now, there's a couple things to note here. First of all, there are people without a strong foundation of faith, a lot of them. There are a lot of people that did not grow up in an, an ideal environment and we don't know a whole lot about Timothy's family situation other than what we read here in the scripture. Since we know that he was half Greek and it seems as though his mother is Jewish, well, we can kind of assume that the dad was Greek at that point. But we don't see a whole lot of information on him, but we do know about his mom. And we do know that his mom was somebody that was strong in the faith and that her mother raised her in such a way that she was strong in the faith. And because of that, she raised Timothy in a way that was conducive for him becoming a strong Christian as well. And that's an important point here because faith can't be inherited, but it can be passed on. And that may seem contradictory, but here's what I mean. You don't inherit it like you inherit something in the bloodstream. Faith is not a trait that you can pass on to your children genetically that you can force upon them, but it can be passed on in the sense like a family heirloom. Now, you can pass on an heirloom to a child that doesn't really appreciate it, and I can't tell you how many times I've seen children that are ungrateful or they don't really have the same sentimental value that their parent had for something, and so when they do get something, they, they throw it away immediately or they don't see it as something that's valuable. The child has the option on that. They can't choose their genes, but they can choose their faith. They can choose whether or not to take something that their parents have given them. And when it comes to faith, you know, there are people that can be successful without having any help from their family monetarily. And in that same sense, there are people that can become very strong in the faith that don't have a great family life. I can think of several people off the top of my head that I could rattle off right here on the air. But the point is, his mother and his grandmother, Lois and Eunice, thought enough of Timothy and cared enough about him and cared enough about God to make sure that Timothy was raised in such a way that he would be ready to serve God when the time came. When he became old enough, when he was going to reach that age of accountability, they wanted to make sure he was prepared for life, but also prepared for a life of walking with God. They wanted to make sure that he had everything that he needed, the knowledge, the, the good habits, the morality that was going to carry him through a life of service to God. 
And there's no telling how many people Timothy baptized. There's no telling how many people Timothy taught and helped bring closer to Christ because of their good foundation. Because of that foundation that they laid for him and made sure that Timothy was ready for the task at hand. And that's why I think it's so incredibly important to bring this up on Mother's Day. Because the world needs really good moms. And I don't want to go off on a diatribe here, but I'm so sick of people essentially suggesting that people don't need moms. When you're talking about the political climate today, there are people that say, oh, well, you know, a man can be a mom. No. We need moms. We need compassionate, caring, nurturing women, and women, as a general rule, are better at those qualities than men are, just as a, a, a part of nature. We need a masculine and a feminine influence. Young men need it, and young women need it. You can still be successful without a mom. You can still be raised correctly without a mom. You can still be strong in the faith without a mom. But it's not God's ideal. God always understood how important the mother's role is in the family, and that's why he designed human beings in such a way that his ideal is a mother and a father married to one another for life, raising children. And because of that, if we were just to follow God's model, I know that it can't always be followed perfect. Some people pass away, you know, unfortunate events happen. I understand that life isn't always the ideal. I get that. But what I'm saying is, if this country had more good moms that did stuff like Lois and Eunice and followed in their example and made sure that their kids had this strong foundation of faith to get live godly lives, don't you think this country would be a lot better? Don't you think this country would have a lot of the problems that we're having with drugs and crime and all the other things that we have that are, are real issues that are a sickness on society. Don't you believe that if we had some moms that were doing what they were doing, because not all the time when, when people engage in those activities is because they didn't have a good mom, but a lot of times it is. They either didn't have a good mom or a good dad, and, and the absence of either one of those can be detrimental to a child. And so because of that, I want us to really stand here and appreciate the work that a lot of our great moms do. That because of them, if you are a well-adjusted person that is competent, can take care of yourself, is more or less self-sufficient, and has good relationships with others, there's a good chance you had a good mom. And that's what Paul is saying here. He understands that the way Timothy became someone that is useful to him as he is and useful to God as he is, is because he started with Lois and Eunice. And really, I think that the most appropriate thing you can do this Mother's Day, and, and I encourage everyone to do this, yeah, get the flowers or chocolates or uh, whatever else it is that you're planning on getting mom, get that stuff too. Show your mom you appreciate her. Sure. But you know what I think would be far more effective? You know what I think would be far more important to her, and she'd probably remember a lot more than that? If you are a person of faith, and you know that your mom was a big part of that, then why don't you call her up and tell her that? It doesn't have to be something that's super long or eloquent. Just tell her one story about something she did one time, and how that really shaped your faith in God and your walk with Christ. I guarantee you, you do that, and you have a mother that's strong in faith, strong in the faith, and you are too. That's going to mean a lot to them, and I think that it meant a lot to Lois and Eunice, that Timothy appreciated them, and that Paul, a third-party observer, appreciated the work that they did with their son and grandson so much that he even mentioned them in the Bible to be read about two thousand years later by you and me. So the greatest gift I think that you can give your mom is to tell her how she, in her life, brought you closer to Christ. Stay the course, friends. Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. 
If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.